Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is me pulling out of my driveway. I'm going to show you guys my neighborhood. I've talked about it, I've brought it up, but I just haven't taken the time to show you. If you're just tuning in, this is where the rich people of Atlanta live. Okay, rich people of Atlanta, not rich people of Los Angeles, not rich people of New York. All of you people from Los Angeles and New York, you keep coming in and there's only one Los Angeles and there's only one New York and the rest of the country is poor. So you're not actually comparing apples to oranges or apples to apples. You're actually really making a fool of yourself because Los Angeles has the fifth largest economy in the world. So, of course, there's going to be mega mansions and mega and it, there's only one Los Angeles. But anyway, here we are. Uh, I'm about to go around the corner and hit Herd's Ferry. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but that that looks like a mansion. It, it To me, it looks like a mansion. It kind of feels like a mansion. Oh, and this house for the whole tip nation. Black folks live there. Once again, black folks live there. Because there's another conversation of, well, you know, why don't you show uh, where the black people live? Well, my last video um, many, many years ago, I think, what, 2011? I did show where some black people live. Here's something you got to understand. Money flows to money. There are one, two, three, four, five black families that I know of on this street. And going back to my neighborhood, the prices start at, let's say, let's just go ahead and go 800K and go up to 1.1 million. Now, going over here, it drastically changes. It goes way up. Um, this street, most of the properties, 1.5 till about 5 million. As you can see, there's a lot of land. These houses are sitting on acres, not a part of an acre, not a quarter of an acre, but they're sitting on acres. Now, this is something else. Um, I decided when I was going to do this, redo this series, that I was going to segment it because it's going to take some time. The goal is to go within a seven mile, no, probably only have to go that way, maybe, maybe a seven mile radius of where I live in either direction. So this would be Herd's Ferry. This is about two miles from my house. And this is what you get. Now, here's this to me, that looks like a mansion. I, I don't know what mansions look like in your neighborhood. But that looks like a mansion because it's acres and it's a corner lot that has the whole corner. And that's got to be minimum three to four acres. We're crossing over Riverside. I'm going to do part of Riverside because that's going to have to be a special video by itself. Because this neighborhood was founded by Coca-Cola Money. Because I was sitting there and I was wondering... How did you get such a high concentration of wealth? Because some of these houses were built in the 50s. And you could tell, like, something like that with those kind of walls, those kind of gates, that, that's very, very old. And once again, acres, baby, acres. Well, here's an interesting story. When I rent my office from the lady, the leasing agent, she lives over here. And she was telling me, now that's palatial right there. That does look palatial. And she was telling me on her street, there were four Coca-Cola attorneys when she moved in about 25 years ago. So what I'm assuming, and that's old, that is really, really old. You see that wall? You see that wall? You see that wall? Yeah, that's a wall. The landscape is... When you look at where this is located, um, just imagine, if you will, Roswell Road, okay? And imagine if you were heading north, that this would be on the left-hand side of Roswell Road. Once again, that type of stuff is old. Some of these houses were built in the 50s. I haven't come across stuff built in the 40s yet, but I, 
uh, when you start looking at property records of these houses, you don't find much because that tells me that the house has stayed within the family. It's never really changed hands. And some of these houses, well, a lot of these houses are paid for. Let me say this again. A lot of these houses are paid for because the mortgage on a $2 million house with a good down payment is still 10 K a month. A lot of these folks are coming in with suitcases of cash who are, if they can buy into this neighborhood, because there's a lot of properties that go for sale that are never quote formally listed. There is a place that you can find out what's for sale and then you make the deal and it, it never hits the open market. Never. Apparently they're doing some construction there. Back to the Coca-Cola thing. And back to the Roswell Road thing, because I got off track. Going down Roswell, say this is the left side, it drastically changes from the right side of Roswell Road. And there's plenty of money on Roswell Road, but not like this. And what I mean is, on the left-hand side of Roswell Road, from, say, Landmark Diner, well, even below, below that, all the way to Alpharetta, the houses are bigger, the, the houses sit on acres. Once again, I'll say the houses are sitting on acres. There's a lot of space. In my neighborhood, you can easily put a few houses between me and my neighbor. Easily. Now, part of the Coca-Cola thing is I believe that they put this stuff this way because it was easier for them to get to headquarters. Because going way, way back, if you don't know, Atlanta, about 1992-ish, 285 was a two-lane highway or something like that. It, it wasn't what it is today. I remember all the construction. And you could come out of this neighborhood, run down Riverside Drive, hit Northside Drive, and be at Coca-Cola in no time flat back in the day before there was all of this traffic and also going back come out of mount uh, come out of Hertz ferry then go up and hang and bust a left on the mount vernon you can literally within minutes be in the perimeter center that's over there where the king and queen building are uh, so this neighborhood was strategically built for executives this neighborhood was strategically built for executives. Now, this is just one section of what I want to show you because, um, like I said, it's going to take a minute for me to get through all of this because in my intro and stuff, I'm always talking this smack. You know, I'm saying that, hey, I live in a million dollar neighborhood. I'm saying that all of my vehicles are paid for. I'm saying that I pay my credit cards in full at the beginning of the month. I'm saying that I live quite well. And this is what differentiates me between everyone else, because there's a lot of people. They're saying they're making money, but they're not providing any receipts, not one receipt, not two receipts, not three receipts. And if you're watching my videos at the end, I got some candy for you folks. I have some serious can D now this is toward this is Riverside where it's about to run into Northside Drive so I'm gonna bust a right and one of the reasons I left all the cars in there you notice what you you see tooling around this neighborhood you see the Telsas you see the Mercedes you see Porsche that's all day long if you see someone in a bucket over here, you know that A, maybe they're a kid and that's what their parents got them because they wanted to punish them, or B, is to help. Typically, it is B. <laughs> that's what you see with people around here in buckets. I filmed this using a GoPro Hero. So it, it's, it's kind of curved because this is what I did. I actually put this in the back seat. I think this is, yeah, this is the back seat camera. A funny story. I had two GoPros because the goal was to drive down Her Hertz Ferry and get both sides at the same time. Apparently there was a technical error on the operating side. 
So I had to bust a Yui and come back because this is the opposite side of Herd's Ferry. And as you can see, you see acres, you see gates, you see massive houses. You see houses bigger than some small town churches. Um, this is goes on for miles and miles and miles. Like I said, this is Herd's Ferry coming off of Mount Perrin. I live off of Mount Perrin somewhere. It's going to blow your mind because, like I said, you know, in the beginning of the video, you, you saw my neighborhood. You saw where I live. And one of the nicest things about living over here is the lack of traffic. Now, I've mentioned this because when you are, how can I say this? All right. You see these houses, right? And you see all of this space. Now, if this was a regular neighborhood where you see one house, they would have five to 10 houses on some of these lots. Some of these lots could easily support five houses. Some could support 10 houses. So this was what creates density. This is a very non-dense area. I can come out of, off, you know, I can come on my street seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, I am not going to hit traffic because per square mile, there's less people over here. And this is going back to what I meant about the left side of the Roswell Road and the right side of the Roswell Road. It is spooky how free it is over here. And there's uh, multiple ways for you to get in and out. I can actually come off of 285 and get over here. I'll actually have to pass my house to bust that move. But depending on what's on Roswell Road, that may be worth the, the time. And often I take that way because with Roswell Road, it's a crapshoot because you will have, there's the first 730. If you leave, you can get out because I used to live off of Roswell Road. But from 7.35 to 10 o'clock, it's, it's, it's just a crapshoot. And then 12 to 3, it's another crapshoot. Now, that that's, I would, I would, hopefully you agree to me that's a mansion. To me, that looks like a mansion. That looks like a mansion, too. I don't know. Let's see. Um, Four-car garage. I, I would think that would be a mansion. But anywho, going back to the traffic situation, it is insane. It is a nightmare. And because the right side of Roswell Road, if you're going north, is extremely dense. I'm talking about if I had to ballpark it, if I was going to guesstimate the difference in. Now, this is very palatial. And look at that gate, that that gate that that was built a long time ago. That was built a long time ago, and there's probably families up in that camp because I'm just looking at it. I think that's two houses side by side. So that sounds like a family situation. But I would think for every one person that lives over here, you go to the opposite side of Roswell Road, and you're going to run into a situation where it's, 50 to 1. So for every one person that's over here, there's going to be like 50 people on Roswell Road. Living in an apartment, townhouse community. Um, and that's, oh, that's something else too. There are no apartment communities over here. Not a one. That is also something of design. It had to be designed because I'm just sitting here. How can you just stop all? You know, well, actually, if you are on the board, if you're part of civic planning, you could show up and cast your vote, vote and you could stop people from building apartments over here. Uh, notice that you have not seen any townhouse communities. Uh, there are some over here. They're, they're very old and uh, typically they don't go up for sale because the people who are in them are hanging on to them because they still get the now that th this is an estate. This is one of those. They can easily get 20, 25 houses where that one house is easily, maybe even more. So going back to the density thing and 
this is part of what I call the economic moat. Economic moats are financial barriers. You always hear people who's like, hey, uh, I'm trying to get the best deal for my money. I'm trying to get it on the low, low, right? Everyone doesn't think like that. And what I've noticed is that this neighborhood prices 90, 99% of the people in the country are priced outside of this neighborhood. Just keeping it real. And it has a certain exclusivity, a certain feel because, you know, I'll go to the racial element of the neighborhood. I'm a walker. <clears throat> I like to walk and I get out there and I walk around my neighborhood. And I've run into several of my neighbors. I've met my neighbors. I've talk, and not one person has called the police on me. For walking in my neighborhood. Now, when I did my first, this is where the rich people in the land live. I had all kinds of comments like, oh, you, they're the white folks. They're going to call the police on you. Look, I want to be clear and I want to be distinct. If you put it in your heart, you put it in your mind that you want to live well and you want to live well in a certain neighborhood, you can't. Are some of these people racist? More than likely, yes, they are. But I guarantee you that if I met them and if there was a way that we could make money together, they would put their racism aside to make that money. See, that's one of the things that separates people in power from people who are not in power. Empowered people know that, hey, if this is our opportunity, if this is a better way for me to make my life better, make my family's life better for me to do something big for me to come up. They are gonna do it. Whereas some people just like, I don't know. I'm going to keep it over here. And also you got a lot of progressive black people. This is how I do it. There's progressive black people and there's non progressive black people. I don't get into all that. These people are ends. No, no. That slippery slope. Now that's once again, you could probably get 50 houses where that one house is. Excuse me, that one mansion. And th this is what goes to the density issue once again. But you have uh, progressive black people and non progressive black people. The progressive black people are moving over here. Uh, some of the b b progressive black people are joining the GOP, even though they know the GOP is racist. There's opportunity over there. And many people are beginning to recognize that, hey, I don't have to live in the hood. I don't have to represent. I don't have to, uh, you know, keep it real. Because there are several black families in this neighborhood. I have seen them. Uh, I've pointed out one's house because it's got a gate around it. And there's some other ones. I don't, I don't know if they have gates, but I'm not pointing them out. But let's just put it this way. You've seen them on this video. And it's not like one. It's not like two. It's not like three. Um, in my neighborhood, there's probably six. And there's 38 houses. So it ain't just the one black person or the one black family. It's a collection of people who are getting together who are seeing that, hey, I can do this. Because there's one girl, uh, she's a young girl, and she walks her dogs. I see her every morning. I know where she lives. I haven't met her. So I actually, she would have been in this video, but I cut her out because y'all would have liked, liked it her because she's got the nice hind parts and stuff. Yes, yeah, she's a sister. Uh, well, she's a young girl. I, I'll peg her at 16 to 18, and she clearly goes to school. Now, this is one of the regular off streets because uh, I realized that my other camera wasn't working. So I just decided to turn around. One of the reasons that you'll have uh, such a house on a regular street is the comps. So if they were trying to finance this or justify a price for this and the look, here's a wall and there is gates and that is bigness. We're just going to call that bigness we're gonna call that living the big life so there's that
You, you see these gates all over the place. They ain't playing. That's an El Camino. I guarantee you he's had that since it was it came off the factory line. I guarantee it. Now, we are got to go back on to Riverside. I didn't go all the way down Riverside because one of my cameras went off. And I didn't know which one. So, I was like, okay, let's just figure this out and go back. So, I stopped and checked it out. Okay, now we're going back to Riverside. I'm going to show you the house of a, well, I, I call him black. Some people call him mixed, but Hans Ward House. And actually, you can go to Zillow and look it up. I'll, I'll put the address in there because it's for sale. They've been trying to sell it for about a year and a half, I believe. I don't even think he is in it. I don't know who's in it, but this is there's this is where a lot of athletes live this is where many movie people tv people live because the way that the neighborhood is structured you can get in and out to a lot of parts of atlanta very easily it is kind of funny so that's a big house sitting on acres I think I said that before. I think, you know, we got acres all over the place. We got acres on top of acres. Uh, this is why I'm showing you this footage to let you know how non-dense this area is. Because the people who built it, the, the people who set it off, this was planned. This was planned. This didn't happen by accident that you would get such a collection of large houses and no trailer parks, no apartment communities. I guarantee you, if you look at the zoning for this area, that that stuff is none and void. Uh, another reason that I chose to acquire property over here is it's very you go. There's not a lot of places that they can build. The neighborhood is extremely mature, and essentially, you would have to tear something down to put something else up. So there's not, it's just not going, it's not going to change. Uh, the housing prices, you know, with this current recessionary action that's going on, uh, they're going to take a hit, but they're not going to take a big hit. More acres, more acres, more acres. Now, you know, these are the regular houses. These are normal houses. These are also the older houses. If I were to look at the property records, I guarantee you that that was built in the 70s or the 60s. And that's where Haynes, yeah, that's that's where he lives or was living or something like that. So I think they tore, I think there was two houses there and they tore them down and they, he built that. And that's typically what you have to do if you want to build something in this neighborhood. Uh, there's a few lots, but typically, I, I know this to be true. I went to a garage sale or state sale many years ago, and it backed up to Arthur Blank's property. Arthur Blank bought houses that were around this property and tore them down to create a buffer between him and us regular folks. This is the stuff that wealthy people do. And there's a lot of wealth in this neighborhood. That's another big old house. I don't know if you can see them because I'm not on that street yet. But this is part of Sandy Springs. And if you give Sandy Springs like $70,000 as a donation, you get to have a turtle put in your yard. That's the Sandy Springs turtles. Look it up. And there's one house that has two turtles. And then next door, there's one other turtle, which tells me that this family has been here a long time. You have a lot of generational wealth in this neighborhood. You got maybe the third generation in this house or the fourth. Now, this is new. You see the difference between the new stuff, the newer stuff? Because I believe that that's probably was built in the 90s, this side here. Because you could just tell by the way that the house is built, the three-car garage, just the architecture and stuff. That that That's sitting on acres. I mean, you can get at least seven houses over there, maybe eight. This is what I'm talking about, because if you really wanted to live here, I think you could. You you wouldn't be able to pull it off in a 
month or a year or two. You're looking at a decade or two. But I think you can do it because in 1999, I was living in a boarding house. 1999, my friends were crackheads because that's who lived in the boarding house. I got out. And in my videos, what I'm talking about, I'm not living in the hood. Word around town as I got the city bumping. And frankly, they did not see that coming. I'm the perfect mix of the Gestapo and El Chapo and Picasso. Except my skin is blanco. And watch me drop the needle into a fetal position. Get my rock on. Old friends wanna get they talk on. Making excuses for why I made it. Cause they hate to see me spot on. I just narrowed down my targets right until I'm locked on. I've never needed to buy a buy necklace to get some neck. Welcome checking my set list. No second guessing, you're not a contestant. If you're not in the circle, you get no spot on the guest list. Without a question, I'm well invested, women impressed with Me, I mean, I guess, I mean, I get To be the meanest in my league, I'm sick, die, diameter You get no piece of the pie, I'm fly my parameters A minus to a calendar Dog, I get all this and more I don't ever sit still, but they asking what I stand for Excuse that I'm the rudest, but there's about to be a sandstorm And getting dust too quick is something that they didn't plan for it's illuminate, assume it's great Walk into a new estate, candlelight to view estate Find why this a fine time to get off these But right before you do, my dear, I hit you with the Uber late Ay, 20k inside a briefcase Bottle of champagne and a cheesecake Jeez, Nate, early morning tea break I like to get my mood right In exquisite cuisine, women and music is what I do like Ay, think I'm bluffing, well you should try it I just gotta make sure I is covered like a pirate Carpet with a red tongue Robe the color violet, having coffee with a red bone Talking politics and science, I am A certified polymath I assume that you will probably ask I'm jumping out the gym, I say you better get your aim right I said you better get your aim I just left the flight, it's been a long day Hey, I can get you right, but in the wrong way Hey, baby, shout out to your mama for the DNA Hey, I bet you gon' follow suit if I lead the way Set me in the dark red room with the candles lit Lingerie, all systems go, can you handle it? Honest, babe, I don't make a promise that I can't keep Real shit, so I promise when you leave You have trouble walking straight and ooh, not to mention I'm heavy with the tension Keep my money close, but I always pay attention That kiss me like you mean it, put you in my position and shout out to the girls who don't know everything they're missing <laughs>